This set of templates turns your scraps into quilts. Hey quilting friends! It's Carolina Moore, your favorite sewing and quilting YouTuber. And this month's ruler of the month is a little bit different. Instead of just doing one ruler this month, it's actually a set of four. So each month I pick a ruler and I try to have it be pretty budget friendly, not like the giant expensive, although awesome, quilting rulers. So this month it's actually this set of four templates that all come together. And it is the Scrap Crazy 6 inch ruler set. This is actually the instructions for it. On the back it shows a traditional block setting and we're going to talk about that plus some of the other awesome things that this set of rulers does. So are you ready? Let's get started. This is the Scrap Crazy 6 template set. It's designed by Karen Montgomery and it is four pieces that look like they just come together to make a scrappy block. And they do, but these four pieces were designed as really specific shapes as well that do really, really fun things. So I wanna show you how you can use this the way it looks like it would be used just as a scrappy template set, but also ways that you can use this template set to make a lot of other really, really fun designs just using these four shapes. It comes with the instructions here, and these are basic instructions, and it shows how to put pieces together, and it gives you some layouts for cutting. It also, on the back, shows you a simple design for making a scrappy quilt using this template. So let's go ahead and just jump in and start playing with these pieces. I have just a piece of fabric right here that I'm going to use and I'm going to cut my piece D out of this. I can go ahead and put this in the corner here. And now I can just using my rotary cutter, cut this out. If you wanted to give this to someone younger to do, you could always have them trace out these template pieces and then cut it with scissors. If you're worried about someone who maybe doesn't have experience with a rotary cutter, then you can do that as well. But these templates are designed with that good template plastic so you can cut right using your rotary cutter. Now I cut this one on the front of the fabric, but you can also flip the fabric over and from the back of the fabric, go ahead and cut out your shape as well. I'm gonna line this up against my edges here and I'm going to cut it out from the back and that way you get the inverse. If you take fabric and you fold it wrong sides together and cut two layers at the same time, you'll cut a right side and a wrong side piece at the same time and that way you'll get inverse of your pieces and you can make inverse blocks. Also, you'll start to see some of the magic here these pieces are each a quarter of a hexagon. So if I added two more underneath here and sewed this together, I would actually have a cute little hexagon shape. Piece D and piece C are actually like senior and junior of one another. This is a small quarter hexagon and piece C is a large quarter hexagon. So as you can see, you can take your pieces and you can also find some fussy cuts. So for example, I want this happily ever after here at the bottom and this true love to both show up on my piece. And I can see those through the acrylic. I also know where my quarter inch seam allowance is going to be. So I know that those are not gonna get caught up in my seam allowance and disappear on me. And this way I can cut out a piece and I can have a scrappy look that is also a really fun quilt that focuses on the best parts of my scraps. There we go. If you're cutting out a lot of pieces, especially for a specific design, and you want to make the best use of your fabric, you can actually do that by cutting a strip. So this is four and a half inches tall, and so I've cut myself a four and a half inch strip. I'm going to take this over to the end of my strip and just square off my end. And then I can flip the whole thing over and put this at an angle so it's just more comfortable for me to cut because I don't need the lines on my mat for this part. 
make sure everything's lined up well. And then I can cut here, pull this away. And I'm actually cutting off my dog ears. That's what these little notches are, is just cutting off the dog ears. And I went ahead and just cut four layers at once. Now I can flip this strip the other direction. And I've rotated my ruler. Cut off the notch here. Goodness, those of you who watch me with my rotary cutter, I'm usually really good about closing it and I forgot to close it there. Okay. So I'm gonna line this up. And I can keep cutting like that all the way down this strip. And that way I'll cut four at a time. And the only scrap that I have are these tiny little dog ears, which is scrap that I would, I would have anyway when making a quilt like this. This triangle is also four and a half inches tall. So from the same four and a half inch strip, I can go ahead and cut these pieces out. You could have rotated your fabric there or I could have rotated my fabric there. Instead of doing an awkward cut, it's up to you. And then I'm just trimming off those dog ears and I can cut four triangles at a time. The next triangle already has this left side cut off for me. So I'm just lining up my flat piece, my diagonal and my long edge. And there we go, we're cutting four triangles at a time. You can see this B piece is just shy of three inches tall. So you could go ahead and do similar with a three inch strip. Cutting here, cutting this angle, and then flipping it and cutting here so that you can get the most out of a three inch strip. And this tiny little piece here is two and a half inches. So you can cut a bunch of mini hexes out of a two and a half inch strip. Let's talk about putting some of these pieces together. I have my D, which is just a mini version of my C. And these are quarter hexagons. So you can take your pieces and put them together to make a hexagon. You can have fun with your hexagon and change it up to different half and half. You could change up your quarters however you want. You can also make your hexagon one color and then start adding on a hexagon of another color and this hexagon would be up here and this hexagon would be down here. So you can just keep adding hexagons together with quarters. And the great thing is about quarters is that they come and make strips really well. So you're not doing Y seams to stitch these hexagons. Also, you can just put two of these quarter hexagons together and this makes little brick shapes that you can use for all different kinds of units. And it's a great angle. And again, this is the D piece, but you can do the exact same with the C piece because it's just larger. We have our A triangle, which also has an E triangle on there. And we haven't talked about that yet, but we will. So you can take these A triangle pieces and put them together into strips like this and just make a whole quilt of triangles as strips or even just rows of triangles. You can also put these triangles together to make larger hexagons. You can also put these triangles together to make larger hexagons. I have two half hexagons of different colors. You can also make fun wedge shapes, and there's a hole here in the middle, but that's where all your seam allowances are coming together. So your dog ears and your bulk is already clipped away, and this will come together beautifully. Now we haven't talked about that E piece yet. We will in just a second. So this B piece is kind of an awkward shape, and I have two cut in inverses right here. So mirror images, they were cut right sides or wrong sides together and cut so that I have backwards versions. And then I have an A triangle, this one right here. And then I cut an E triangle, which 
is just, you can see a two and a half inch strip that instead of lining up against the top edge, I lined up against this cutting line for optional E right here. And so the E piece will actually come right down in here and it'll make this kind of a wonky hourglass shape that's a really fun design as well. And you can put these together to make columns or rows of this diamondy hourglass shape and that's really fun. So that is the A triangle and the E triangle with B pieces. Now we did talk about how this can be scrappy and I love how on each one of these template pieces, it shows you how it comes together. So you just grab one template piece and you can already see how this will all come together. So to stitch this scrappy block together, you would stitch these two pieces together and these two pieces together and then you'd have one nice long seam here in the middle that you would sew together. And you can press these seams open or to the side, it's your preference. But that's how you would make the scrappy block and you can make a bunch of these scrappy blocks and put them all together to make a nice big quilt. If you love scrappy, I have another video on scrap tape and I'll link that right here. So go ahead and check out the scrap tape video if you wanna learn about more ways to use up your scraps and that uses even smaller scraps than these ones right here. There you go, a bunch of different ways that you can use this Scrap Crazy 6 template set to make not just the scrappy block but use all different kinds of scraps to make all different kinds of configurations for really fun scrappy or curated quilts. Wasn't that easy? I'm so glad that you joined in today. Make sure that you've hit the subscribe button below so that you get notified whenever I have more quilting videos up. There's always more coming. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that it was a good video and they should show it to other people as well. And if you have any questions or comments, there is a comment section that is just waiting for you. And I look for those comments and try to get you a response right quick. So go ahead and leave your questions and comments down below. Those make my day. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. And I will see you right here real soon. Bye for now.